Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another episode of Cars and Life. So I want to um, go over um, the differences between a connecting rod that is rated for, let's say, 400 horsepower as compared to a connecting rod that's rated for almost four times that, so 1,500 horsepower. So, you know, how on earth uh, does this guy actually, um, how can it support 1,500 horsepower, whereas this guy can only support you know, four to 500 horsepower. So first of all, um, obviously we can tell that the width of this um, guy here is much larger than the width of the stock rod, okay? Um, so this rod, uh, the new rod is actually um, a 4340 billet I-beam rod. So that means that they start with a chunk of forged material. It's like a brick, let's say, and they mill it out and they create this shape in the form of an I-beam, uh, this cross-section here. So if you were to cut it and take a look at the cross-section, it would look like an eye. Uh, in contrast to um, H-beam rods, if you were to cut it and look at the cross-section, it would look like an H. So so if you look at the, the differences, um, you know, we have a larger width, and um, from an engineering standpoint, um, as this guy moves, you know, back back and forth and rotates, um, there's actually stresses um, introduced into the rod. Um, we have compressive stresses, bending stresses, and shear stresses. So it turns out that the bending stresses are actually inversely proportional to the width of this guy cubed. So that's huge because as you increase this dimension, the stresses will drop by the cube of that dimension. So that's very helpful in reducing the amount of stresses that actually are introduced in this connecting rod. <clears throat> Another aspect is the cross-sectional area is going to be larger for this one. So any compressive stresses are going to be much lower in this one. So let's say that the cross-sectional area uh, for the new rod is tw is twice that of the old rod. That means that the stresses for a given, you know, um, RPM or boost or whatever, um, they're going to be half of what you see over here in the stock rod. So that's that that's half the picture. So that helps us out there. the The other advantage um, is the material itself. So the material itself is 4340. It's forged. It's going to be much stronger, meaning it's going to be able to handle a higher stress than um, compared to, to the stock rod. Um, so given the, those two aspects of geometry, which controls the stress, and the material type, um, and also how it's machined, um, controls how much stress can be in the material. So that's really essentially how this rod on the right-hand side can sustain so much more horsepower than the guy over here. So if we look at the, oh, I'm sorry, if we look at the, the thickness um, of each rod, you'll notice there's not too much of a difference. Uh, and that's, you know, I guess that's expected. Um, you know, the stresses in the rod here aren't going to be too sensitive on the width of the rod. Um, another aspect is these I-beams are actually built to be lightweight um, for the given size or how much material they have as compared to other rod designs. Um, so being lightweight also helps. So as you increase the RPM, um, forces due to, iner due to inertia will actually cause you problems as you increase the RPM. So the lighter the rod is, the less the mass it has, and therefore the less um, dynamic forces are actually introduced into the rod. So that actually helps too. So um, if you look into 2,000 horsepower and above rods, they'll actually start being very light. They'll actually start becoming aluminum, um, which are much lighter than steel. So I was thinking about getting aluminum rods, but um, it looks like there's issues with those because um, as they heat up, the coefficient of thermal expansion for aluminum is much larger than for steel. So there's some incompatibility in the engine and there's just a lot more to, to worry about, a lot more um, issues that might arise 
So because this engine is going to be, you know, basically street and almost a daily driver, I figured I'd just go with build it, um, you know, forged 4340i beams. And they're going to be strong enough. I'm not going to go over 1500 horsepower with my setup anyway. Well, that's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send me a message. And if you like the video, please like it. Otherwise, I guess don't like it. Um, and also, it would be great if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you.